Hello everybody, I just want to encourage you today. I just began to start feeling in my heart that many of you are experiencing personal loss, that there is a lot of uh, loss and confusion during this time. And so my heart just really goes out to you who may have had to let go of certain opportunities or certain appointments or not be able to get together with certain people that really meant a lot to you or you've been advised by your doctors not to do certain things um, at this time if you've had to go visit the doctor and so I, I know that this is really tough on our mental psyche when we have these kinds of difficulties and tragedies and of course this one is of a biological sense but that does not negate the fact that the psyche, uh, the psychology, the sociology of people, the spirituality of them uh, isn't affected because it is. And so we're spending a lot of time on dealing with the biological aspects of this virus, but at the same time, we have to understand it has immense effects on the psyche, how we psychologically view things. And it is very, very important at this time to stay in the Word of God, to continue to renew your mind and wash your mind in the Word of God. And I am concerned about you from a psychological perspective and from a spiritual perspective and from a social perspective because uh, when um, this biology is... Um so much of a concern, it cuts off our social interactions. And, and for many of you, that can be very, very difficult to have social interactions cut off or minimized. And so um, I, I really just wanna pray for everyone today um, because I know different people are processing this at different levels. I always teach you all from Ephesians chapter two, verse six, that you're seated with Christ in heavenly places. That is your seat. Learn during this time to stay in that place with God, to, uh, if, if you are for to be in isolation and you don't want to be uh, go to those places where you take some time to think and to meditate on the Lord and I have a lot of resources in that area you know the discipline of solitude this is a good time to start practicing that if you happen to be in that type of situation because it, it will help you hear the voice of the Lord better um, also uh, soaking soaking CDs are amazing I have quite a few of those soaking in his righteousness faith for the heavens those are soaking CDs that will help your mind mind begin to focus on the Lord and on relationship with him during this time. But I, I know that this is hard. Um, the Lord's been speaking to me about the fact that as people are going through this and they're feeling lost and disappointments, and I want you to know I've had my own. I, I'm no different from you. I've had to say no to opportunities that have arisen uh, for the rest of the month. It's been difficult for me um, to say, no, I can't attend that event or I can't um, do this or do that as a result of what's taking place. But we've got to know that during this time, God is working on our hearts. He never wastes a moment. And though the spirit of death and destruction has come to steal, kill, and destroy, the enemy is going to have to return to us a hundredfold what he stole. But is now a good time to begin to start sowing, sow life into every situation. And so I just want to read to you scripture from, um, from Galatians, actually. Let's read Galatians chapter 6. And the word says uh, in verse 6, um, I'm sorry, verse 7, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, this he will reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap correct corruption, but the one who sows to the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. And so uh, the word then begins to speak in verse 9, let us not lose heart in doing good, for in due time we will reap if we do not grow weary. So, let us take the opportunity now to do good to all people and especially those who are in the household of faith. And so I just want to encourage you, you can sow to the spirit right now. You can begin to sow to the spirit man on the inside of you. You can begin to sow uh, to your own mind the word of God. You can begin to sow financially where God is telling you to financially, even in what is a famine. Uh, when we sow in famines, we reap great harvests when things turn around. And this will turn around. It most definitely will. And so we need to know and understand this. And we need to have faith and belief in what God is doing now at this present time. And so I'm going to pray for you right now. I'm going to pray for you to have your spirits lifted and to be seated in that place with Christ. And no matter the loss you're experiencing, uh, remember there was a time when Jesus went and told all the disciples that he was going to die on the cross. He was going to be buried and resurrected. And, and they didn't understand 
understand what he meant, but when the day came for him to die, it was a very um, difficult day for everyone. There was a lot of mourning, but he said, wait, I'm going to resurrect in three days. And that is the story of a Christian's life. No matter what we're faced with, disappointments, loss, uh, if we're battling fear, if we're battling uh, different emotional things, whatever it is that you're dealing with in and around your home and environment right now, just know this, that the resurrection does come. And we're getting ready to start practicing that here uh, as Passover is shortly upon us. Um, on, on Wednesday, May 25th at sundown, the calendar turns over to the first day of the religious calendar year, which is the month of Nisan, where Moses got specific instructions on how to handle the plagues and the death. And specifically when the angel of death comes through, they were to put the blood on the doorposts of their homes and the angel of death would pass over. And so I want to encourage you to take Passover every day or communion every day, okay, which is having your own personal Passover. As you repent, and when I, I mean repentance, it's, it's really just taking your heart before the Lord and saying, God, deal with me. If I'm not handling this well, deal with me and tell me why and teach me how to raise above it so I can live that resurrected life in this moment. Take that, uh, that bread and that cup and proclaim his name and declare and decree what, what the truth is, that you are resurrected in him and that all of the inheritance that he has is yours. And this is your proper place. So, Father, I just thank you now for those that are watching. And I'm just being real, real. I mean, I'm looking real today. This is, I'm, you know, nothing on except for me just talking to you, saying, Lord, I, I, I love your people and you love your people. And, God, I'm asking you to raise them up right now and to encourage them, build them up, Father, in, in their most holy faith. Um, if you've not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I speak fire over you right now that you would raise up, that you would take the land that God has called you, that you'd be Begin to uh, receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Receive fire right now. I pray that the fire angels come upon you right now, right where you're at, and they begin to burn off any uh, sickness, illness, disease that you may be faced with, wherever you're at, that the fire angels would activate, that the Holy Spirit and fire angels come together to burn off every sickness and illness that's surrounding you, and even activate your mind in a way that you feel revived, that you feel holy, that you feel ready for what's before you. And so Father, I thank you, Lord. We bind every demonic force that is lying right now, and we ask you, Father, um, to just cause your people to raise up in unity and stand together in faith. I thank you, Father, that what the enemy has stole from us, you will return a hundredfold. I thank you that we'll sow during this time of famine and, and confusion and uncertainty, Father, because in the end, those who sow will reap a harvest, Father. We will not grow weary, and we will encourage one another as the household of faith. And so, Father, we just praise you and we thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And I ask you, Father, to just continue to bring healing, restoration, hope, transformation, encouragement, victory to each and every person that is watching this today. And no matter where you were at before you saw this broadcast, I'm believing right now that you are feeling seated with Christ in heavenly places. He's a good God. Shout out his name. Give him a victory because he's taking care of all of it on the cross. And no matter what we have gone through, he took it on the cross, he buried it, and he resurrected us and seated us with him. So go forth in victory. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And you're going straight into a new season and a new time of victory. No matter the trials before you, lift yourself above them and keep on marching. God says, keep on Keep it on. Be fruitful. Multiply. These are commands from heaven. Don't quit. Don't stop. No matter uh, what uh, is around you that is trying to prevent it. Keep that heart attitude. And in the end, you are sowing into good ground with that heart attitude and that belief. And the, the benefits are going to be seen. In Jesus' name, Amen. Share this with a friend and encourage them. Go on my website at candacesmithman.com. I have lots of resources there to encourage you, build you up, and lift you up during this time so that biologically, psychologically, socially, and spiritually, you are a whole person ready for all that God has for you in this season.